Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Mushoku Tensei season 2 episode number 10. All right, the previous episode um we were able to uh, Rudy was able to get out of that whole messy situation. Zanoba, new character who is the third uh, prince of the Shironi kingdom. He <laughs> <laughs> he got fascinated by Rudy's uh, figurines and he was like, yeah, I'm going to get out of here, but you need to uh, make me your disciple. <laughs> and Zanaba was like one of those uh, blessed childs or Mikos, as they said, who had the like, you know, immense strength. And I think they said something like he like tore off his brother's uh, neck or something when he was three years old. Like that was like the amount of power he had and we saw that like you know like he took um, Pax by his neck and just brought him in front of Rudy and was almost going to tear his head off. <laughs> so Pax uh, like you know Pax surrendered not surrendered but he was like okay like you can do whatever you want to I'll leave Rudy alone all that stuff and you know like the whole thing the whole hostage situation this hostage situation the the people that Pax were keep, keeping captive that thing got resolved uh, Lilia came back Aisha like you know and all of them like you know they, they got reunited and yeah everything went well uh, in the end we kind of get to see that um, <clears throat> uh, Aisha probably knew from the beginning that Rudy was his br her big brother <laughs> I don't know from where he was able she was able to realize that but she was able to realize that and <laughs> <laughs> like in the end we, it's nice to see that you know like she knows that it's actually Rudy is actually her brother and unlike you know the whole situation with Norn this like you know like Aisha at least uh, you know respects her brother like that's the thing so yeah like uh, that was that we all went, go towards our own ways and uh, oh and Zanova and <laughs> Pax got exiled like I don't know probably uh, Zanova probably got exiled because he you know like was almost going to kill Pax that's why I guess so yeah but Pax obviously we know why he got exiled because of all the things that he did so yeah so yeah let's see what this episode brings probably we are going to go back to uh, Fitoa so let's see what happens so yeah without further ado let's get started this is episode number 10 of Mushoku Tensei season 2 so I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one. <clears throat> Whoa, oh, this is the dragon. No, wait. Wait, is that rigid? Wait, what's happening? Oh my god, what's happening? Oh, this is that guy. It's that guy. Oh, whoa. That guy, I don't remember his... I don't even know if they mentioned his name or not. The guy with... Um, who looks like a dragon. Like, and has dragon scales or something. Remember there's this one episode when Rudy was saying something like um, I wonder like and I hope we don't meet anyone whose strength is a lot higher than uh, Rujit. Well, I guess we're probably going to meet that person in this episode. Oh, what is this place? <clears throat> what what's happening? Whoa. Oh my god, dragons, look at them. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow, so dragons are natural things for them. <laughs> They're like, oh, look, <laughs> it's a dragon, just like how airplane goes out on top of your head. You're like, oh, look at that, it's an airplane. <laughs> While in here, it's just dragons. Wow, oh my god. My god, Rujit almost lost his eye. Wow, she can, um, she can fight now properly. Ooh. Wow. My god. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, he he has, he accepted his her growth. I'm sure she, he felt something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh my god, she will. Well, obviously she will now. Hmm. Oh my god, I'm thinking of what's going to happen after this. You know the the opening scene? Oh great. <laughs> e <laughs> wow. Arius, calm down. Root is getting traumatized. I doubt that. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, are they fighting? Hmm. Lesser of the seven great powers. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. What? Oh my god, here we go. Oh great. I'm not ready for this. Whoa. Oh my god. Okay, they're but okay. they're going away. Oh no. Yeah. Oh my god! That scared me! What the hell? Whoa! Wait, he knows him! Oh no! He can't see, he, even with his demon eyes. 
Wait, she... How do they know them? But not Rudy's name. Okay, go away. Oh no, Rudy, stop! Oh my god! No! Oh. Orsted. Yet, oh, mm, he can just look in the future or something. Probably. What? Oh, maybe because he's an. He's been isekai That's why, maybe. Oh no, he... Okay, he'll probably understand that he's not from this world. What's happening? Oh no. Oh my god. Yeah, just just turn back and go away. No! Don't! Oh my Oh my god, Rudy, don't oh god. Apostle. This is impossible. How? Oh my! Impossible. It's impossible to defeat this guy. How? What can you even do? Rudy's demon eyes can't even keep up with this. Oh no. Oh my god. What? How is this guy? Oh no! Run, Rudy! Dragon God. Oh, this is the second one. This is oh, this that means there's even someone top on top of this guy. Oh my god. Wow. Whoa, what the? Oh my god! No, anyone can do that. Wait, what's he doing? Oh, was that like a faint? My god, what's happening?
Oh, it's breaking! Laplace? Oh, the... Okay, I, I think I remember them actually mentioning Laplace before, but I can't remember. Probably that, that uh, floating castle or something related to that, I think. Oh no. Oh my god. Nana Hoshi? Seven star? That's her name? Nana Hoshi? Oh my god, we're back here. Oh great, we now have a hole in our chest. Dude, no, no time for jokes. Uh... Yeah, do you know Orsted? Yeah, like because <laughs> this guy's enemies are attacking us now. I don't think so. I think you're the one who's bad. <laughs> Oh, you could not see that. Curse. Curse children. Oh. Yeah. Oh. In this world, that's why nothing happened to him. Yeah. Because you're not from this world. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, true, true. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, Laplace is that one, okay. It's almost gone. Oh. What?
Yeah, like nowadays people actually trust him, you know, like we see. Like, we'll see. Yeah. He, yeah, he's the second one, I think. <laughs> yeah, w was, what about the number one? Technique God. Oh, then why? Oh, that's why. Is that why he's number two? Because of the curses? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Rudy is being very... Oh, is this like some reverse psychology he's doing? Ah. <laughs> uh. Here they go. What? Wait, just like that? What the hell is... What? Oh, that's why. Yes. <clears throat> Just saying something like maybe this kid is or something he was saying. Oh. Well, that was something. Okay, um... <sighs> okay, so... I guess everything's fine? Uh. Wait, so... One thing's pretty clear here, Orste doesn't like, <laughs> doesn't like uh, Hitogami, that's very clear. Then, 
Then what? Then why did they save him? Like, I I, mean, I think Nanahushi said something to him. She was saying something like, maybe this boy, something like that. And like, you know, then he cast a healing spell. But before that, I remember Rudy saying something like, oh, he took me. Yeah, he comes in my dreams. So seeing how much hatred this guy has for Hitogami that was the reason why he killed him so what did Nanahushi even say which made him change his mind and healed him that's the question here like it's just, it's a fact that Rudy is somehow related to Hitogami in some way or the other you know so that was the reason why okay that's the end that was the reason why um, Olstead tried to kill him. Then what did Nanahoshi even say which made him change his mind? Um, we'll see. I'm sure they'll let us know. Probably in the next season. <laughs> I doubt they'll, <laughs> they'll tell us that in this season. <laughs> but yeah. Alright, uh, this episode. Um, now in the beginning when they gave us a little, like you know, that scene. I was really concerned about Rejet. I'm not, I was not concerned about Rudy because I know, knew Rudy somehow will be able to survive. Otherwise, like, you know, he's the main character here. Like, if he dies, then everything, <laughs> everything, is, deep, everything is over. So, now, that I knew, like, Rudy will be fine somehow. That I knew very much. I was pretty sure that um, uh, Ares would also be okay because I, I think, like, they, in the beginning scene, they kind of showed us Ares. You know, like battered, but it's, she seemed f fine. The thing who I, the person who I was concerned about was Rejet because, um, yeah, because I think like in the beginning they were calling Rejet's name and Rejet was like fallen down, <coughs> you know, with his uh, face on the ground. I was thinking something would happen to Rejet because of that. So thankfully nothing happened to any one of them. And uh, yeah, it, it, like the conclusion was good, way better than I was expecting. I was expecting something drastic to happen here. But yeah, now okay. So this episode, uh, at the beginning, we kind of see how Eris and Rijet were like you know doing a little sparring session, and Rijet was like, "Yeah, I can call you a warrior now. You have earned it." And they. You know, like that was like a little happy section. They were seeing dragons and everything. And now the interesting uh, thing here is that they said something. Rijet said something like, even the stronger people, like you know, stronger uh, like, people in this world, they even they would have problems fighting a nest of dragons. One dragon probably they'll be able to handle, not three or five of them. So, but the superior ones would be stronger and they would probably be able to defeat them by superior i'm guessing he was talking about number one two and three number one i think they, something they call something like technic god or something is they said mm. number two is Austed. we don't know who number three is or who after that is but i'm guessing the upper few ranks would be okay battling like three or five dragons all at the same time Matter of fact, we also saw in season one, Orsted was actually fighting a dragon most probably. I'm not sure what that was. There was a little glimpse of Orsted and a dragon confronting each other. So I'm guessing, yeah, he's pretty capable enough. Like seeing that in itself probably shows us how strong Orsted is. And then, like, you know, all that was happening. We're, we are going through a tunnel kind of thing. And in comes Orsted and Nanahoshi. Now, here's the thing, everyone gets scared because of, I'm guessing, his curse, which uh, Hitogami explained later on. Anyone from this world will be afraid. Everyone from this world will be afraid of him. So since uh, Rudy was not from this world, he couldn't, he wasn't afraid. Now, here's another thing which uh, was kind of odd here. Number one. Um, this guy, he was able to actually tell who uh, Rijet, Ares, and Rudy. Wait a minute, did he tell Rudy's name? Just a sec, let me just check. Like, when he 
stood no um what's his name um rigid rigid called rudy by his name rudius don't move a muscle so it was not that he knew rudy's name from the beginning so wait a minute okay uh Okay, um, yeah, here we go. Uh, I checked that portion out. He did not know Rudy's name. So uh, he stood there for a few minutes. He said that, oh, Richard, you are like, you know, like you've improved or something. He said like that. Uh, no, something, yeah, he said something along that line. Eris, you've grown or something. And um, then he was going away, but then suddenly Rudy stopped him. And he's like, wait, who are you? I don't know you. Um, what's your name? Rudy is great at, he introduces himself. Now this whole thing kind of gives us uh, a vague, uh, what do you call it, say, impression of that this guy probably knows every, each and everything that this world has. I don't know how he knows that. If he, probably he has some kind of a power which is similar to Rudy's demon eye. Um, but the fact is that it's a lot strong, probably a lot stronger than Rudy's power because um, he he not only like he, he even knew their names. So that probably means and he was talking in such a way with them. It made it seem as if he was like their lifelong friend or something like uh, this thing, this the way he like, you know, uh, addressed them was very weird. For example, um, he says that is that Regis Superdia here? It, it, like this conversation seems as if like he is like some lifelong friend he they have suddenly like you know met in the middle of the street and he's like oh is that Rija Superdia I see something like that that's why in the beginning I was like wait a minute this guy knows these two like how do they even know them but then when Rija and Eris was like how did you know our name like that's when I realized that oh something is wrong with this guy this guy probably has some extra power or something now like that's how he's talking to the Rija and Ares. It's as if like he has known them for like so long, while these two like Ares and Rija have no clue who this guy is at all. And <clears throat> then he says, "And you must be Ares Boreas Grey Rat." And you, I don't recognize. Okay, yeah, here we go. So the way he talks to them now, this makes me feel as if his power is something. Which, I don't know, which is probably that he knows each and everything of this world or something like that, you know, like by just looking at a person, he'll probably get to know that person, like, you know, from the inside out or something like that, I'm guessing. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense the way he actually like, talked to them, addressed them, like it's as if like, they are meeting after quite a long while, like they're lifelong friends or something. He was talking to them like that. Like, that's why I'm saying, like, that's probably his power or something. But obviously, he wasn't able to recognize Rudy because Rudy is not someone from this world. And I'm guessing, like, the only limitation that this guy has is people from this world, he'll be able to gauge their, um, you know, like, know who they are or something like that, I'm guessing. And the limitation is only in this world. So, uh, a person like Rudy, he will be um out of like you know like a limitation or something that's why he wasn't able to realize who he was and he even said that oh paul has uh two uh, ch children uh norn and aisha and did he mention the name i don't think he mentioned the name but still like, you know he said like had two girls uh he like the fact is he didn't even acknowledge rudy's existence which probably um confirms my suspicion this guy actually um knows each and everything of this world like when he asks Rudy, who are you? Mm, where are you from? He's like, I'm uh, Rudy's gray rat. He's like, gray rat, which like, you know, which gray rat? Like, who is your father? And he tells his father's name. And as soon as he hears his father's name, I'm, I'm guessing like, you know, in his mind, there's like some kind of a, uh, like, you know, huge library or something. He starts speaking around, finds Paul's diary or something <laughs> like, you know, bio data turns it around and he's like paul gray rat um this will happen to him this 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 and um like you know like he has two children and he's like wait paul has two children you're not in there 
something like that like i'm guessing it's something like that that's like some kind of an internal library where he knows each and everything of this world related to all the person that's why he needed to know who his father was otherwise he wouldn't be able to say anything if rudy did not say his dad's name here he probably wouldn't be able to guess who rudy was or like you know probably won't be able to see who this guy is since rudy said his dad's name he was able to check and even after checking, he wasn't able to find Rudy anywhere because Rudy is not a person of this world. He's an exception. So, yeah, I'm guessing it's something like that. It's very interesting, his power, I feel like. Mm, and another thing, like two uh, weird things also happened here. Number one, that cow, that bull, like that, that was a bull. That was not a cow. What am I, what am I even saying? Or ox, I'm a, a, anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm bad with animals. So yeah, uh, that's probably an ox. Um, started like, you know, like going uh, crazy and just ran to its death. What was that about? Like, that was very weird. Uh, that's number one. Number two, the second thing that's weird here is Rudy wasn't able to, like when Rudy was trying to see what he's going to do using his demon eyes, it was like a weird disturbance. He wasn't able to see it. So either he's too fast to actually gauge, you know, to actually gauge that, yeah, what he's going to do in the future. Either that or he has some kind of a special technique which does not let him, let others peek into his future or something. Who knows? So yeah, this guy is a pretty big deal. Now, <coughs> <clears throat> the biggest mistake Rudy here does here is he actually tells him about uh, Hitogami because the funny thing here is since Rudy is in no way related to this world if Rudy didn't tell him anything about Hitogami he wouldn't be able to actually know you know if Rudy actually like you know stopped himself from saying Hitogami's name or reacted to it this guy probably wouldn't even know that he's related to Hitogami. If this was some other person, you know, like some other, like, you know, person of this world who had connection with Hitogami, I'm sure if this guy came across that person, he, at, this, at that time, at that moment, would be able to realize that he's connected to Hitogami and he would just kill that person. But since Rudy is not from this world, he wasn't able to peek into him or something like that. That's why he didn't know that Hitogami is connected to him. That's why he had to ask him. He said that are you um like you know related to Hitogami or do you know someone called Hitogami? And Rudy's like, oh yeah, he is. <laughs> he comes to my dream, and that's it. Uh, it's over. Like he's he just came and just started attacking. And for a moment, Rudy actually saw his death, like you know, like the the gaping hole in his uh, stomach. But Rudy just came and stopped it. So yeah. Now, Rudy actually needs to, now, <laughs> take this as a, like, you know, lesson. I really hope Rudy stops, like, you know, like, you know, telling everyone, like, you know, if, if the chance arises, telling anyone about Hitogami. Because, yeah, like, this, Hitogami is a shady person. Like, no one knows what he's done and what, who, who he is. Like, we don't even know, like, whether, if he's a good guy or a bad guy. So, you know, like. Just like Osted had like some kind of animosity with him. And he just started attacking Rudy as soon as he realized that he's connected to Hitogami. Yeah, Rudy should probably not do stuff like this again in the future. Like, you know, talk about weird people coming into his dream. <laughs> yeah, you should probably stop that. Uh, especially to strangers, you know, like don't talk about Hitogami to strangers. Unless and until you are confirmed that he's your ally, he or she is your ally. So yeah, now here, mm, this guy pulls out quite a few interesting moves. Number one, he just annihilates Ru uh, Ruijet, like the way he fought there. And then Eris, like, you know, one-shotted. And then, like, you know, like he pulls out some kind of worm portal or something. And still Rudy was able to actually kind of injure him i guess using that um that drill kind of thing where um i don't know like uh, i think eris also probably helped in that it's like made a little fireball and i'm guessing that kind of got integrated with the drill and it just went and shot him 
And one thing I saw like him doing, I did not realize that at the beginning is like he made wind magic and put it in his mouth, didn't he? Like to, to gain some air. I'm guessing his uh, lungs got ruptured or something most probably. Something happened. Like, let me check that part again. Like he, he uses that drill at the beginning and Yeah, and then he consumes air into his mouth. Like, that was an interesting way to use his power, I guess. Yeah, and... um. <clears throat> now, Orsted himself was pretty impressed by Rudy's, uh, like, you know, mana. Mana strength. He said something about, like, even Laplace would probably be... Uh, like, you know, like, it's, it's probably something which is... Uh, the same power level of Laplace or something like that he said and Laplace being the person who is the one who did the curse the whole uh, Superth curse that guy I think and I think he's also probably somehow related to the floating castle I remember in season one them saying something about that I can't remember what it actually was but it was something related to Laplace but yeah okay uh, yeah that was that and Rudy just like you know almost died here now <clears throat> now here Nanahoshi actually says something to um Orsted. Okay, um here it is. He's like she's saying, listen, Orsted, something's been bothering me. Maybe he's that's it. Something she says which probably made Orsted uh cast a healing spell on him. And uh Okay, now he, then we meet Hitogami again. Hitogami says something about Orsted is bad, this and that. He says, I'm the good person. Now, a person who actually <laughs> refers to himself as a good person is quite shady, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's something with Hitogami. Like, I feel like he's like some kind of a... Um, I'm not saying he's bad, but I'm saying maybe he's like some kind of a... What can I say? Like probably in the gray area or something, you know, like she's neither in the white, like, you know, in the light area or the dark area is in the middle of it, in the gray area or something like probably something is going on with him. I'm not sure. Or maybe he is a bad person. We don't know. But I doubt he is a good person. You know, I'm talking about Hitogami because there's quite a few things that's actually really shady about him. He is helping Rudy. But there's probably some kind of, uh, like, you know, his own, uh, what's it called? His own um, uh, intent, no, what's it called? Like, uh, there must be something that he has in for it as well. Like, he's going to benefit for if he helps Rudy. There must be something or something is, 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 is maybe there's something in behind the scenes that's going on. That's why he's helping Rudy or something. Because it doesn't seem like he is doing this for, I don't know, the good of his heart. There is something. Like, the thing is, like, if he really is a good person, why would then Orsted be so hostile towards him? Like, I don't know. And, like, looking at Orsted in this episode, at the beginning in season 1, I thought he would probably be a bad guy. But now that I'm seeing him, I feel like he's not a bad guy. Like, he, he was pretty, what can I say, um, like, his behavior, the way he acted, was not, it did not incline anything bad about him. You know, first of all, he, yeah, he, he first of all did not try to harm or injure Eris or um, Ruijat, he just knocked them out in a very bad way. The only person who wanted, who he wanted to kill was Rudy and he did that. And after Nanahoshi told him something, he even healed him. So all of this kind of makes me feel as if Orsted is not a bad person. So then what does that mean? Orsted is not a bad person. And Orsted does not like Hitogami. He's hostile towards Hitogami. That kind of makes me feel as if Hitogami is a bad person. 
because you know like i feel like ostet is a good person and the person who ostet thinks is an enemy of is is hitogami and that's why like you know like the enemy of enemies of friend that type of thing is going on here so that's why i'm saying like maybe hitogami is probably morally uh in a like you know in a in a neutral either in a neutral position or morally in a bad position either of it so we still don't know what is going on but i doubt he is full clean there is something going on with hitogami so yeah and now here's another thing i don't know if hitogami actually predicted this how this is going to go because he seemed pretty chill throughout the whole situation when rudy said that i'm going away he was just walking away hitogami is like stop look at your chest and that probably makes me feel he knew that what's going to happen and how orsted is going to act so yeah that's another thing so all these things like you know like i'm, I'm kind of thinking about now so yeah who knows you know like uh so yeah in conclusion i feel like orsted is probably a decent guy he's not someone who is like a bad person or something but he just hates hitogami that's something and i still don't know what the hell is up with hitogami and yeah that's basically it we still don't know who nanahoshi is you know um he, she was wearing a mask first of all and secondly she said something to hitogami uh, to orsted which made orsted heal heal rudy so she's also a mysterious person and yeah that was it in the end everything goes well rudy somehow managed to be alive again but yeah i doubt this is going to continue like this you know if if after this even after this if he somehow tries like you know dies or something i doubt he'll be able to come back unless and until something like this happened and here he didn't even die i guess he just you know got knocked out almost was going to die so in the nick of time ostad helped him so i guess he was not dead here he was just in the brink of death so like at, like you know receiving the shock he probably went to that 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 place where hitogami is and he thought that he had died but nah he's he's fine so yeah like it was a pretty what can i say um uh like i was not expecting an ending like this i was like you know going i was prepared for something bad happening in this episode thankfully nothing happened you no, know, like the the first scene really made me think something's going to happen here, but nah, everything's okay. I'm glad about it. So yeah, on with our journey again, I guess. <laughs> so that's it, guys. So that was my reaction to Mushoku Tensei season two, episode number ten. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed, and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Mushoku Tensei. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.